Good morning, and let's talk morning routines in this episode of Sales Talk Over Coffee from my hotel room here in Orlando, Florida, before an Owens Corning event. And I want to get to the bottom of this because of what I realize is that my day is dictated by the first one hour to two hours of my day when I started. Brian Tracy said it best. He was the first hour or two of your day is like the rudder of the day. It steers the direction of your day. And this might have happened to you. Maybe you, you wake up, you roll over, your phone's on that end table, you grab it, and the first thing you do is check your email, your text messages, and you are in reactive mode. You go from this state of bliss at night, right? Just snoozing and resting. The, the recovery that you desperately needed and then boom, just like that, that day is going from zero full rest to 100 miles an hour full speed ahead. We end up feeling like a ping pong ball getting bounced around all over the place throughout the day. And those days, at least for me, meant that my performance and my sales performance was the lowest possible because instead of having a plan and going after something, I was on the defensive the whole time. And years and years went by and I knew for me, there were three key things that I knew helped me feel grounded helped calm my mind, help me sleep better, help me be more energized, and it helped me be more focused throughout the day as I attacked my goals. And in this video, I wanted to share with you what all led to me coming up with this morning routine, why I do it, and why it involves coffee. So let's get to it. First, welcome or welcome back. Adam Benzman here, the Roof Strategist, and everything I do here on my channel, in my podcast, in my programs, is designed for one very simple reason, and that is, to help you and your team smash your income goal and give every customer an amazing experience. And in order to smash your income goal and in order to give people an amazing experience, you, my friend, have to be coming from a really good grounded place. So how do you start your day and what's an ideal morning routine? I'm gonna share mine, but I gotta share this right now. There's no magic pill for everybody. But what I am going to share with you is what's worked for me. I'm gonna teach you some easy ways to get started. And number three is the easiest way to keep up that routine no matter where you are. And that's why I wanted to film this video because I keep up this routine, I practice what I preach, and I wanna share with you what's helped me stay grounded no matter where I am physically in the world. Traveling at home, doesn't matter. So let's get to it. Number one, I wanna start at the very beginning and that is the cell phone. I do not, unless I'm traveling, is the only exception to the rule, I do not keep my phone in my bedroom. That's the first tip and most important thing that I want you to take away. You hear me? What did I just say? Yeah. Get your phone out of the bedroom. Get an alarm clock because here, take self-discipline to not check your phone, stay on your phone at night, be on Instagram, Facebook, scrolling through. And then the first, in the morning, the first thing was first thing we do. We roll over, we check the time, we see the notifications, we're in the notifications, we're in the email, we're in the group chat, we're in the text messages, and we are in reactive mode. And I noticed that when I started my day like that, as Brian Tracy says, the first hour or two of the day is the rut of the day. It steers your day. And if I wake up being steered in the direction of chaos and mayhem and reactivity, that sets the pace for the entire day. So number one, get your phone out of the bedroom. I personally keep it. I'm not in my house. I'm in a hotel room here. I keep it in the um, front hall laundry room of my house. And the reason I keep it there is because I have to physically get up in the morning to my alarm clock, there's no phone, and I have to walk out of my bedroom, down the hall, into the other room to grab my phone. So what I've done is I've removed the need for self-discipline because self-discipline would mean, oh, my phone's there, but I can't use it. And then you know how that is, you get squirrely. Like right now I'm obsessed shopping with it for an ATV. And I was like, oh man, well, I can do some ATV research and shopping in the morning. Well, that's not a great way to start the day. The great way to start the day is by calming my mind. Okay, so number one, get rid of your phone, get an alarm clock. Number two, I start my day first thing with a morning meditation. Now, some people might say, Adam, that's hooky, that's weird, that's hippie. I don't care what it is, you do it. You can call it deep breathing, intention, prayer, you name it. But for me, that's a combination of Shambhala or mindfulness meditation, which is simply the practice of being still and breathing and focusing on the out breath, paired with a gratitude meditation that I learned actually from the Netflix special, Stutz, S-T-U-T-Z. And I was inspired to blend those two together. And I've continually kind of modified what I do in my meditation. But the key thing is that I simply sit and I control my breath and I'm just simply present with no distractions. And I try to do it for 20 to 30 minutes, but I'll talk more about that in a minute because I don't always have the time. So number two, again, is that morning meditation. Number three is I get in some semblance of physical activity. And that will vary. I like to get in a walk or run combo. Sometimes I'll walk, sometimes I'll run, sometimes I'll walk, run. And if it's nice out, I'll be outside. If it's not, I'll be on a treadmill. This morning, I did my walk run on the treadmill right at the gym. And at home, now my wife has a treadmill desk. I'm starting to jump on that so I can stand there and get some thinking done and some journaling at the same time. <clears throat> and if it's beautiful outside, I'm gonna go for a run in the mountains. 
Now, if I'm in a hotel room like this and I'm short on time, I've got some floor space over there. I travel with little exercise bands and I'll get a body weight workout in like I did yesterday in my hotel room when I was at a different hotel for a different event and I, I was short on time, got in late, had to get up early and I just got a quick workout in in my hotel room, series of push-ups, squats, um, lunges and then ab work. And that was just four exercises, three by 10 and I got it in. Now, is it a lot? No, but I'll tell you this, it's a whole lot better than nothing. All right. Number four is some sort of reflecting and journaling. Sometimes I sit down with my actual journal and I write and I write and I write. And other times I have my phone and I have a new notepad. I have the Samsung Galaxy and I got the little, the little uh, stylus and I'll sit there in the morning and I'll write ideas. Like I came up with this idea while I was on my treadmill in the morning. I was like, I gotta do this video about a morning routine. So I'm taking notes on it, planning for my day, reviewing my notes for the day, and using that time to really prime my mind on the bigger picture. What does my day look like? What do I want to accomplish today? Setting some intentions for the day. Or other times when I'm journaling, I'm spending that time reflecting on challenges. Like if I was having a, dreams or I'm going through stuff, I'll ask myself a question and I'll write it down. Like, how can I? And then I write down the, the, the question that I want to solve or the, that I'm looking for answers for. How can I create great content even when I'm traveling and can't be in the studio? That's an example. I said, hey, you know what? I got this great shot. I can set up here. I got natural light. So instead of saying, oh man, I'm stressed. I can't get this thing done. It was just, how can I do it? And when I write that down, I tap into my subconscious, the journal flows and the ideas arise and it really helps come up. That Most all of my good ideas come up either in the morning or on airplanes, both of which mean no internet, no distractions, and just being with myself. All right. Now, after I do that, I do a stretching routine. And I did that this morning as well. Sometimes I'll stretch before a workout, but other, other times it's after. But either way, I get it done. Now, the reason I do that, we're all getting older. None of us are getting younger, unless that I know of. And I know that in roofing sales, we sit a lot. Uh, we're in our truck a lot. And that, to me, took a, a lot of wear and tear in my body. And I started to develop... You know, I had a big spinal surgery, but sitting is what makes my back hurt. And I found that if I stay limber and I stretch every day, I'm good to go. All right. So bring us up to speed. One, phone out of the bedroom, wake up with an alarm clock. Two, start your day off with quiet stillness as a meditation. And if you're someone who hates meditation, that's okay. Go for a walk, do something quiet, sit there, stare off into space. A big book, by the way, that inspired this was Johan Hari's book called Stolen Focus. And he talked about the need for stillness in our mind, that creativity arises. And I used to think that it was a wasted effort. And then I started to Realize that I would go on these morning walks. And I used to hate walking. It sounds boring, doesn't it? I don't want to go on a walk. It's only a senior citizen. No offense, senior citizen. <laughs> Uh, but I'm younger than that. Look at this face. So it's like, I need to find, like, do I, do I really want to do this? So I just started to go on these walks and I'd leave my phone at, at the house. And all of a sudden, like, stillness came. I enjoyed the quiet. But then, like, answers to my questions or insights just started popping up. It was almost like by letting the waves settle, all of the, like, the, the silt. Think of it like this way. If you had a bowl of, well, I'll call it coffee and there were grounds in it, right? And it's all stirred up. You can't see through the coffee because the grounds are floating. But if I let this cup sit in that stillness, all of a sudden, all the grounds that might've been in there are gonna settle, leaving the liquid more clear and easy to navigate. And the same thing's happening with our minds. And that's one, one thing that's been really helpful. All right, last thing in my morning routine is doing some sort of daily learning, stimulating my mind, either reading books, listening to podcasts, or listening to an audio book. So there's my morning routine. Wake up with no alarm, jump right into meditation. I, in, in again, order change here, a workout and or stretch, okay? And then, and then vice versa. And then I journal and I do some active learning. Now, some people might say, well, Adam, that takes a lot of time. The answer is yes, it does. It absolutely does, but I wanna leave you with one little hack. Like when I'm out here, I gotta scoot in about 25 minutes to get to my event. Let's say I got in late and I didn't have as much time or my event started even earlier, what do I do? Guess what, I still do it, but I don't care how much it gets done. My job, as Jerry Seinfeld says, is don't break the chain, keep up that pace so we can keep that consistency underway. So if I only have, if I normally meditate for 20 minutes, by the way, my normal routine is about two hours, two and a half hours. I wake up early, that's my time. Then the day starts. I realize children, other responsibilities, early days start. So what I do is I just get it done. If I can only sit still for 60 seconds or even 30 seconds, guess what? I go through the motion to keep that routine up. If I can't get a workout in, I'm in my room. Who, what's, what's to say you can't drop down and give 20 push-ups and then 20 lunges and then 20 squats, just just one, one round, 20, 20, 20. 
under three minutes, boom, you're done. But you kept that routine up. And over time, compounding is way better to do that than nothing. So you have a choice. Something is better than nothing. And the most important thing is keeping that routine. Same thing with your phone. Keep it in the bedroom. If you just don't touch it for a minute, you're better off than starting it instantly. Same thing with a workout. If you can't get a full workout in, you dabble. If you can't get full learning in, you dabble. As long as you get some of it done, you build the routine. And the easiest way to get started, I want to leave with this. The absolute easiest way to get started is to layer in one thing at a time. Learn that one from Jesse Itzler, by the way. One thing at a time. So if you have no morning routine, you need to pick what's going to help me the most. Hey, you know what? My best advice, getting that phone out of your room. Set it up. Start there. Go for a week, you're used to it. Next, you're gonna add in that meditation. Because by the way, it was way too much for me. I knew reading, meditation, and stretching, and exercise. There, I, Stretching and exercise, I could kind of merge together into one, but those three slash four things, I knew would really ground me and make me feel better. And I was overwhelmed with getting started. So what I did is I just said, hey, I'm not gonna be like, oh, be hard on myself. If I don't do all of it, I'm a loser. It's like, no, just get started with the easiest thing, add the next thing, and keep up that routine. So I want you to pick right now, and then drop it in the comment section below. What's the one thing that you're going to add to your morning routine to get started? Drop that comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. And I'd love to hear what's your morning routine. Is there something that you do that keeps you fueled up, fired up, and excited to tackle the day? Drop it in that comment section below and share. That's the beautiful part about this community here that we're assembling. So thanks for joining me in this video. If you like this format and I should do more videos while I'm on the road and coming up with ideas, then comment and let me know. Or just hit that like button because that will tell me. And if you don't like it, hit the dislike button because that'll also tell me. I appreciate you spending your valuable time with me today. And I truly hope that this video has inspired you to tackle your morning, focusing on one person and that's you. Getting your cup full, finding that balance, grounding and clarity to stay focused. Let those brilliant thoughts arise naturally so you can tackle the day and smash your income goal and give every customer an amazing experience. And just because our time here is about to wrap up doesn't mean you're in my time has to. So if you haven't done it, I invite you to join me inside our new free training center. And it's available by clicking the link in the description, or you can text the word free to 303-222-7133. That's free to 303-222-7133, or you can click right here. And if you want to continue with me here on YouTube, YouTube thinks you're really going to love this video, and I'll see you in the next one.